Good morning, everyone. I hate to be the spoiler, but I heard the sounds of laughter, I heard chatter, and I heard, I saw beautiful smiles, and I thought, hmm, we have to start nonetheless with all of that. May I extend a very, very, very warm Jamaican welcome to all our visitors, but even, you know, sometimes we're in Jamaica, we don't extend a warm Jamaican welcome to our own fellow Jamaicans. Good morning, everybody. No, that means that we didn't eat any ackee and saltfish or kalaloo and dumpling this morning. So let me try again to get the warmth of the Jamaican vibe to this morning. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. like when I had a little bit of dumpling. There was no cornmeal in the dumpling, but I, I won't try again because I think maybe it's the Blue Mountain coffee that you need to have. And some people have it around about 10 o'clock. Well, this morning is a fantastic morning. In Jamaica, we'd say it's a big deal. It is an absolutely big deal because we're here to solidify some partnerships in technology and more. And I'll tell you some more about it. But first, let me extend a warm Jamaican welcome to our lead minister in this project, Senator Dr. The Honorable Dana Morris Dixon, the Minister Without Portfolio in the Office of the Prime Minister with responsibility for digital transformation. We also have with us this morning the Honorable Favel Williams, the Minister of Education and Youth. This morning we're being hosted by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and representing the ministry is the Honorable Alondo Terralong, the Minister of State and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade. And he's one who boasts all the time because he's multilingual, you know. So he always likes to come up and speak to you in Spanish and other languages that he knows very well, including our own Jamaican dialect. We also have in our midst this morning, representing the Minister of Industry, Investment and Commerce, we have our Permanent Secretary, uh, Sancia Bennett-Templer, our special guest this morning from the EU. Ms. Helena Koenig, the Deputy General Secretary of Economic and Global Affairs at the European Union. Welcome, please, give her a round of applause. She's the visitor, real visitor among us. And someone who's adopted Jamaica because I see her doing 5Ks and all kinds of things all over the country, or Ambassador Marion Van Steen, the head of the European delegation, she has a big job, not just Jamaica, but she is responsible for Belize, the Bahamas, the Cayman Islands, and Turks and Caicos. Wow, that's a big portfolio, Ambassador. We also have other members of the diplomatic corps here with us this morning, representatives of the public and private sectors, including those from the private sector organization of Jamaica, and I see lots of them, including those who have authored books on technology. We'll talk a little bit more about that. Other stakeholders, members of the EU, specially invited guests, ladies and gentlemen, Good morning once again. Today we're here to exchange documents to herald really a great partnership with the EU in terms of development of Jamaica's digital footprint and digital uh, infrastructure. We're boosting digital competency for our teachers or schools or students, bringing Wi-Fi to our schools and children's homes, and supporting especially or micro, small, and medium-sized enterprises to expand the use of technology for improved efficiency. It's one of the mantras of Prime Minister, the Most Honorable Andrew Holness, in terms of looking at how we can make Jamaica more efficient and thereby increasing our productivity and ultimately uh, increasing the development capacity in Jamaica. So to start us off in terms of our uh, exchange of ideas and speaking, let us welcome to bring greetings Mrs. Sancia Bennett-Templer, the Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Industry, Investment and Commerce, representing the Minister who will uh, speak this morning. Give her a round of applause, please. Thank you, Ms. Naomi Francis, Press Secretary, Office of the Prime Minister and Master of Sermons this morning. Let me recognize Senator Dr. the Honorable Dana Morris Dixon, Minister Without Portfolio with Responsibility for Skills Development and Digital Transformation in the Office of the Prime Minister. Honorable Fable Williams, Minister of Education and Youth. Honorable Alanda Terlang, Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade. 
And I must also recognize Ms. Helena Koenig, uh, Deputy Secretary General for Economic Development and Global Affairs of the European Union, as well as Ambassador Marion Van Sien, um, who is very well known here to us in Jamaica. Um, other representatives, other members of the EU, specially invited guests, heads of agencies, I have to give recognition to Ms. Valerie Vieira, who is the head of the Jamaica Business Development Corporation, who is going to be an important, play an important role in the MIIC's program, a um, portion of the program it revolving around this digital transformation. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I am delighted to be present today at the exchange of documents for the European Union Government of Jamaica Digital um, Transformation Support Program. And it is my pleasure to convey warm regards on behalf of Senator the Honorable Aubin Hill, Minister of Industry, Investment and Commerce, who I'm representing here today. Minister has been on a hectic schedule. He's just back from New York, London, um, and France, and he's back and rushing with other things. We have investors who came in last night um, who he is meeting with, and so regrettably, he could not join us here this morning, but he sends his warmest greetings. Digital Transformation for Jamaica, this program, known as Digital Jamaica, is funded through the EU Budget's Neighborhood Development and International Cooperation Instrument, with a substantial EU contribution of 9.5 million euros. And I am very happy that 1.7 million of that 9 million, 9.5 million euros, will be allocated to the Ministry of Industry, Investment and Commerce and our business development arm, the Jamaica Business Development Center, to provide digital transformation services for our MSME sector. We think that this is critically important. And just to say, Ambassador, this is my own third program with the EU, um, having worked on a program in health and then a program in justice. And I really am very appreciative of the opportunity to be able to work again with the EU on behalf of businesses in Jamaica. The program will support Jamaica's priority to achieve an inclusive and resilient digital economy and society. Focus areas, education, communication, business, and other services. But as I said, very happy about the portion allocated to us at the Ministry of Industry, Investment, and Commerce. And that 1.7 million in terms of business support is targeted at our micro, small, and medium-sized medium enterprises sector, which is a critical sector for Jamaica. The active participation of MSMEs in the digital transitioning program is of great importance given that they currently constitute about 60 to 70% of all jobs in Jamaica. And a significant number of them are very small micro-enterprises. A substantial fraction, approximately 83% of the MSME sector belongs to the micro-sector. And this sector contributes about 44% to GDP. So we're talking about a very significant sector. You know, I said recently, my minister is very focused on exports. And I said at a function recently that if we have 440,000 MSMEs in Jamaica and we were able to get 20, 25% of those MSMEs to export $1,000 a month in goods and services, or $12,000 a year in goods and services, US dollars, and you multiply that by 100,000 companies, you begin to see that increasing exports is not just for big business. You, you begin to see the impact that working with our MSMEs can have in terms of economic growth, 
and development. And then I've also said if you get each MSME company to hire one more person, if we have 440 MSME companies, we would then have an even more serious um, labor availability issue here in Jamaica. So just to underscore how critical the MSME sector is and therefore how important this program is in including in its construct support for the digitization of the MSME sector here in Jamaica. Engaging them in this MSME sector is particularly significant because by nature, they tend to be agile and responsive to change. By involving them in digital transitioning programs, there's a tremendous opportunity for widespread adoption of digital technologies. This will not only enhance their own growth and competitiveness, but will also contribute to economic growth by creating, as I earlier would have alluded to, new employment opportunities in Jamaica. So, ladies and gentlemen, I want to extend sincere thanks to the European Union for this program and for the inclusion of my ministry in this program. Digital solutions can support MSMEs by assisting them in managing transactions at a distance, delivering goods efficiently, facilitating access to financial services and engaging with existing and new customers. It can help them in terms of use of their devices that they may have, creating websites that they can use on their computers, um, establishing social network presence, developing mobile apps, and designing e-coupons, online marketing, and so on. If we're going to be able to grow exports in Jamaica, we can't do it simply by taking people to market. We have to do it by using all of the social tools available to showcase Jamaica's products and services to the international markets. The ministry's program will see um, training for the Jamaica Business Development Center and their team, along with business support services um, providers, who will then be able to provide digital transformation training for MSMEs across the island. It will also see the expansion of the services of a number of the Jamaica Business Development Centers, business centers, which operate right across Jamaica to ensure that we include in those centers digital transformation, digitization, digitalization services so that we're not just doing things here in the capital city, but we are offering these services right across the country to our small businesses. And that is in keeping with the ministry's trust. My minister is very firm that you can sit in Kingston and do everything, and that it's important that what we're doing is taken right across the country. In fact, we are currently involved in roadshows in conjunction with another development partner where we are going across the island to various centers to take the services of the ministry, other ministries, agencies, and departments, and in fact also the private sector to small businesses right across the country. And of course, we will now be able to include information on this EU digital transformation program as we go across the island with those roadshows as well. We started off our roadshows in Mandeville recently. We will have our next roadshow um, on the 26th of October. That will take place in Montego Bay. Um, then on November 1, we go to Ocho Reyes. And then on the 21st of November, we will have that roadshow event here in Kingston, and that will conclude the first phase of our roadshow program in conjunction with our international partner. But the minister is very intent that we will go to every single 
parish across Jamaica. Um, on those roadshows, all 20 agencies of the ministry participate. So we have the company's office of Jamaica, and they're there to provide services in terms of filing of returns, um, registering companies, um, helping persons to register business names, and so on. JBDC is there to work in terms of business development support services. How do you do your business plan? Do you need training in financial management and so on? And, and so they are there with us as well. Jampro is there because we have to talk about how we can export more from Jamaica. And so all 20 agencies are there with us and this program will now become one of the areas of information and getting the MSME interested, involved, and knowledgeable about the work to come as we go right across the island. Um, ladies and gentlemen, just give me um, a little bit of latitude to also recognize Ms. Lamont from the EU. She worked very closely with us on the development of this MSME segment of the program and we thank her and the entire team at the EU for the support that we have had throughout this process. We look forward to collaborating with you further as we work through this program. We thank you again for your support. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, P.S. Bennett Templer. I don't know about anybody else, but while P.S. Templer was speaking, my heart was doing some cartwheels. Because when you really look at it in your mind's eye, the kind of transformation that can happen from this program in terms of what small businesses can do, the ripple effect in terms of all the systems that it can improve, I am a happy lady this morning, I'll tell you that. Um, so big things are going for Jamaica. Uh, you know, I, I, I hope um, our Jamaicans here will help our uh, visitors understand sometimes when I break out in the vernacular. Big things are going on Jamaica means, boy, lots of good things are happening. So thank you so much, EU, for the partnership. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to take the moderator's um, license for a minute because we're in a special house, purpose-built house, and I'm going to, as they say in Jamaica, lay hands immediately and ask our Minister of State in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade, who we're sitting in his building, to just come and say a few words, bring greetings this morning. Senate, uh, Minister Terrell, he was a former senator. By the way, he may just break out into Spanish and Patois and everything and talk to you this morning. Thank you so much, uh, Naomi. It certainly is a pleasure to be here with you all. And whilst the protocol has already been observed, allow me once again just to welcome um, you know, our, our guest, Her Excellency Helena Konig, and of course um, the other members from the European Union, and certainly my colleagues who are here. Uh, you know, so this morning underscores the importance of Jamaica's foreign relations. When we speak of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade, Oftentimes, people think that it is some sort of a, a, a far-off ministry shrouded in, shrouded in mystery, you know, and that we only get invited to cocktail receptions and, um, you know, to do protocol events at the airport and to, you know, in terms of how we direct, um, you know, and, well, interact with, 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 with dignitaries and so forth. But this morning's signing of such a pivotal developmental agreement that takes Jamaica not only along the path of present, but into a future, a digital future, signifies the importance of Jamaica's foreign presence on the global stage and the importance of the work that we have all been doing here at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade. Jamaica takes its bilateral relations very seriously. Jamaica strongly believes in multilateralism. And this morning signing is the fruit of the labor of a government that understands its position in the international arena and what it means to develop stronger cooperation with our bilateral and multilateral partners. 
digitization, um, you know, our Prime Minister has often said, Jamaica must not only be known as consumers of technology, Jamaicans must become producers of technology. And in terms of equipping the youth of this country, you know, with Wi-Fi capabilities and more digital products, etc., it enables us along that path. So I want to thank my colleague ministers for the work that they have done. I want to thank our EU partners for the work that we continue to do together. Jamaica and the EU has enjoyed more than 40 years of good relations. Yesterday we started the seventh Jamaica-EU dialogue, political dialogue. And in addition to discussing areas of cooperation such as digitization, we have also discussed areas of health, youth, education, I mean, um, you know, citizenship and citizenship and justice, um, you know, in terms of crime fighting and so forth. And also, I can state that the visa issue certainly was one of those discussions that we discussed at length yesterday morning and certainly even late yesterday evening. And, um, you know, what I want Jamaicans to understand is that our partners in the EU, it is not their mandate to deny anyone a visa. What they've asked is for persons to apply to get their visas in a timely manner. And also there's some good news coming out, you know, for our artists and our athletes and, you know, I mean, persons who, who ply their trade in the cultural sector. You know, and in speaking with our ambassadors, they have indicated that we will look at the circulation visa, which is a multi-entry visa, which lasts for five years. Certainly, there are some requirements to be, able to, to be eligible for that visa. And of course, it involves traveling to the EU maybe once or twice previously. Um, it might cost a little bit more than the ordinary visa that gives you a single entry that might last 30 days or so forth. But certainly, that is good news for all our cultural practitioners and our athletes to note that in applying for your Schengen visa to enter the European Union, you can now apply for a circulation visa, which is a multi-entry visa that can last five years. So on those notes, I just want to say that this is a government that believes in the principles of working together within the world space. This is a government that believes in partnership at, our, at the bilateral and multilateral level. And this is a government that will continue to ensure that we have meaningful projects for the growth, development, and prosperity of our nation, including a digitization agreement that takes Jamaica further along into the future and one that is riddled with prosperity. I thank you all. Minister, thank you so much and well said. Um, you know, one of the things that uh, we're called on uh, to do often is to ensure that we make the connections, create the links. And, uh, you know, while we may think that prescriptively persons may uh, desire a certain outcome, they may also have their eyes set on other things. And certainly the issue of travel, uh, even in, with the, with the uh, technology and the digital transformation we speak of, is also a critical point for Jamaicans uh, to also engage. You know, uh, when I was talking with uh, our partners at the EU, one of the things that you know, came to mind is that with EU funding, we're going farther, faster. And I think the Jamaican public should also understand that because part of this uh, program here today is that it's part of the 2021 to 2027 uh, outlook that uh, the EU and Jamaica has in terms of support for digital transformation activities along with climate change and of course citizen security. That's crucial because this is not something or a program that's being thought of by an external partner. It's a partner such as the EU that's working together with our people to ensure that we have the best outcomes. Well, another sector that's part of uh, this particular Digital Jamaica project is the education sector. And if I may dare say, it is the most critical ministry that will take Jamaica forward. It speaks to our, our students who are there, it speaks to learning, and all those critical factors that will ensure that the Jamaica we dream of for tomorrow becomes a reality. And we're actually right now embedded in a whole massive transformation of our education system. This is a critical linchpin in terms of assisting to ensure that we have digital transformation in our schools. So ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for our minister, the Honorable Favor Williams. <laughs> Thank you.
Good morning, everyone. Thanks. Let, let me acknowledge Ms. Naomi Francis, Press Secretary, Office of the Prime Minister, and Master of Ceremonies, Senator Dr. the Honorable Dana Morris Dixon, Minister Without Portfolio, with responsibility for skills and digital transformation in the Office of the Prime Minister, and of course, our very own, our host, Honorable Alonda Terrellon, State Minister, Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade, Ms. Helena Koenig, Deputy General Secretary, Economic Development and Global Affairs, European Union, and hope you're enjoying your stay in Jamaica so far. Let me acknowledge as well Ambassador Van Seen. Thank you so much for the support of our very ambitious parenting program. We have a goal this year of training over 100,000 parents. This academic year, 100,000 parents in effective parenting. And we could not have done it without the support of the EU. Members of the diplomatic corps, representatives of public and private sector organizations, heads of our teachers, teacher education colleges, and I see Howard Isaacs here. I see we have some students as well, and I know there may be a few teachers, specially invited guests. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning again. The Ministry of Education and Youth welcomes the EU-funded Digital Transition Program for Jamaica, known as Digital Jamaica. It is an important complement to our efforts at enabling our citizens to develop new capabilities from simple digital literacy to more complex competencies in data science and coding. We believe that as our people gain new skills, the digital challenge will become less daunting and that they will be enabled to take on higher valued job roles, gain greater job satisfaction, and strengthen the foundations that companies and organizations need to power their transformation. In this regard, I am particularly pleased that the education sector will benefit significantly from this program as it will support the integration of Jamaica's national ICT competency framework for teachers into the curricula of teacher training institutions. Teacher educators, in-service teachers, teachers in training, and persons aspiring to become teachers stand to benefit. As you know, modern computer technologies now make it possible for teachers, students, and others to join communities of people well beyond their immediate environment, to exchange perspectives, review, analyze, contribute, examine, and organize issues logically and in context. To help our students adapt to these challenges, we have refreshed our curriculum to ensure that the knowledge, skills, and values taught to them remain current and relevant and that modern methodologies are employed in imparting and sharing knowledge. For us in the education sector, the increased focus on technology allows for an avenue to encourage our students to widen their career prospects and to embrace this field as one in which they can thrive. We believe that by improving access to technology and technological devices, we will create a level playing field for all of our students, allowing them to see the endless possibilities that exist for careers, especially in the STEM or STEAM areas. At the same time that we show our students the endless possibilities that exist with technology, we want them to also know about the privacy concerns, the cybersecurity risks, and the potential for social isolation, and that technology must be used responsibly and ethically. If we do that for our students, we would have balanced the scale. We have started the enormous work we have to do regarding data protection in education as well. As an education system, 
We have observed how countries such as Singapore, Finland, and Australia have used ICT in education policies to transform their education system, develop the capabilities of their people, and ultimately the economy. We believe that the performance of the education system must play an integral role in achieving our national goals and objectives. To that end, I want to thank the European Union again for this financial contribution towards our developmental goals of closing the digital divide and providing our people with the skills needed for the 21st century. Thank you. Okay, so I always have to adjust for height, right? Thank you so much, Minister. Very, very important. And again, Minister mentioned this issue of uh, just ensuring that our, our people, our children in particular, are, uh, so I'm going to say future-proof, but really and truly, I don't want to throw it away like that, that we focus a lot on STEM. Some people would say STEAM, but we're saying STEM, science, technology, education. And this is Jamaica, so you're going to get some arts in there, and of course, mathematics. And this is why I'm talking about STEAM, because I'm absolutely happy and pleased to see two of our students from one of Jamaica's best primary schools. I didn't go there. My neighbors, actually, when we were children, went there. And um, I have a few friends who have children at Jesse Ripoll Primary School. We have two absolutely beautiful children from Jesse Ripoll this morning. We're going to give you an artistic piece from Jamaica. Uh, let me just make sure that I don't join them. Though they're brothers and sisters, I won't join them. It's Ms. Ngozi Wright and Mr. Tafari Wright, accompanied by Mr. Omal Wright on the drums. Ladies and gentlemen, make them feel nice and welcome with a round of applause. Little you 
N I T Y. Badam badam bam. Jamaica of the brains for it. I T proper internet protocol. I P in the industry. We are V I P. All we need is a little U N I T Y. Badam badam bam. This is the land of kings and queens. Jamaicans must reign supreme. Minister say go Jesse Ripoll another time for our students ladies and gentlemen they were really really good and I'm reminded by the principal of the Edna Manley College for the uh, Visual and Performing Arts who is also here with us that you know Mr. Wright who was on drums is also a, a, a graduate of Edna so hold on you see this is why arts is so big in Jamaica right all right round of applause for Mr. Wright so there you go um, you know, while I was listening to, uh, you know, Ngozi and Tafari, I thought, oh my goodness, does everybody understand what they're saying? And then I thought, you know, one of the greatest way of communication is expression. And I'm sure you got that they were saying something really, really special about how special it is to be in Jamaica and be Jamaican. So for example, they said, Children are the internet sensations, right? Uh, we are the future generation. Jamaica has the brains, and we are big, you know, and we can do it in unity. Got that right? I was, I, I was gonna put our foreigners, our visitors on the spot and say, well, what did you get from it? But I'm sure that just the expression alone would have told you that really and truly, that we're saying something absolutely special about this project and certainly about the partnership in terms of digital transformation and digital Jamaica. Ladies and gentlemen, may I also welcome uh, a few of the ambassadors who are with us from the EU. Uh, we have the French ambassador, Olivia uh, Grenovec, uh, ambassador. I, I plea, I plea your pardon. I may not get the uh, entire pronunciation right, but Ambassador Olivier, thank you so much for being with us. Also the German ambassador to Jamaica, uh, Jean uh, Hendrik Van Thiel, did I get that right? Close enough. All right. Thank you, Ambassador. And of course, our Spanish Ambassador, Diego. Uh, lots of people love Diego because Diego Maradona, of course, uh, is a, a beloved footballer on this side of Jamaica. Um, I supported Germany last um, World Cup, just to let you know. All right. Um, so, uh, Diego Romero, thank you so much for being with us here this morning. And of course, uh, the uh, representative from the Americas Division of the EU, Mr. Tim Soler. Thank you so much for being with us this morning. Did I get it right? Close enough? Perfect. All right. I got 100% a while ago. Very good. Well, ladies and gentlemen, 
our esteemed visitor is here with us today, and she'll talk a little bit about this project. It's something that the EU has been working on uh, in terms of partnership for a long time. And I think this morning she can smile from ear to ear. She's not in Jamaica for too long, so we're going to try and see if we can spoil her with everything Jamaican that is food, ackee and saltfish, and of course, the Jamaican love. Lots of hugs and certainly lots of great conversations as you stay in Jamaica and you leave. You want to come back quick, quick, Ambassador. But la ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for the Deputy General Secretary of Economic and Glo uh, Global Affairs at the European Union, Ms. Helena Koenig. Um, wow, that's a tough act to follow. Uh, Negotiant Tafari, fantastic, uh, and uh, Mr. Wright also, of course. Uh, thank you, uh, Ms. Norma Francis, uh, Press Secretary of the Office uh, of the Prime Minister uh, and Master of Ceremonies. Honorable Ministers, uh, uh, members of cabinets, EU Member States Ambassadors from Spain, France, Germany and Belgium, and of course our EU Ambassador also. Uh, representative of public and private sector organization and other stakeholders. My colleagues, other colleagues from the EU delegation who has been working so hard uh, for this day to come and will continue to work on this. Um, special invited guests, ladies and gentlemen, all protocols absurd. So, good morning again. It's a pleasure to, for me to be here with you on such an occasion. Today is a game-changing day in the four decades long EU Government of Jamaica partnership. Game-changing because today we officially launched a 9.5 million euro program, Digital Jamaica, which you've already heard so much about this morning. Uh, the first concrete, grant-funded, multi-sector program of support to Jamaica's digital transformation agenda launched after post-COVID-19. Uh, Game-changing because Digital Jamaica is the first bilateral EU Global Gateway flagship program to be signed in the Caribbean. Now, what is Global Gateway, uh, you may ask, and you see the logo behind me there. Uh, it's a new European strategy to boost smart, clean and secure links in digital, energy and transport sectors and to strengthen health education and research system er, across the world. Much of the things we discussed during our day yesterday also uh, at the political dialogue. Global Gateway aims to mobilize investment through a Team Europe approach, uh, bringing together the EU, uh, its all of its member states, their financial and development institutions, and of course our banks also, uh, the European Investment Bank uh, principally. Uh, it seeks to have a trans uh, transformational impact uh, in the digital uh, climate energy, uh, transport, health and education and research sector. And a pickup transformation was something that Press Secre Secretary Naomi Francis mentioned also about this project. It is transformational. Global Gateway focuses on smart investments in quality infrastructure, respecting the highest social and environmental standards in line with EU's interests and values, uh, rule of law, human rights, international norms and standards which are also uh, Jamaica's uh, interests and values. Global Gateway underpins the EU support to Jamaica's digital agenda. Uh, the EU and Jamaica are like-minded partner, uh, partners. Uh, this is evident by what was said by Senator the Honorable Kamina Johnson-Smith, who in her remarks on the occasion of Europe Day this year, stated that EU support to Jamaica, the wider Caribbean and indeed the rest of the world, is a further display of EU strong solidarity and commitment to Jamaica's development goals and aspiration. With her statements, uh, the Senator outlined what the EU and the Government of Jamaica partnership means in the context of the Global Gateway. We believe our collaborative effort in bringing together three important ministries uh, of the Government of Jamaica to develop Digital Jamaica, responding to your own digital agenda uh, at the nexus of your ICT, 
uh, MSMEs and ICT in education policies is a concrete demonstration uh, of the continuing maturity of our partnership. Digital Jamaica represents a well-packaged program of support to key challenges identified by Jamaica as imperative to address over the next four years. Firstly, Digital Jamaica will support the Ministry of Education and Youth to review, update and integrate Jamaica's national ICT competency framework for teachers in the curricula of all publicly funded teacher training institutions. This will help build the digital competency of pre-service, new and in-service teachers. The strategic targeting of all of the foundation of education is vital for Jamaica to achieve its goal uh, of a knowledge-based society and a digital competent labor force. And indeed, that is something which is important for everyone, all countries. Uh, secondly, Digital Jamaica will boost the collaboration between the Office of the Prime Minister and the Ministry of Education and Youth to bring wide area network and Wi-Fi connectivity to over 1,000 public schools, including children's homes. Uh, this will optimize uh, the synergies and value creation of past and present broadband and connectivity investments, both national and commercial. Uh, it will contribute uh, towards an ongoing government effort to reduce social vulnerability to the digital divide, particularly among students, including special needs students uh, in unserved and underserved areas. Thirdly, Digital Jamaica uh, will also support the Jamaica Business Development Corporation, an agency of the Ministry of Industry and Investment and Commerce, and its network of small business development centers to include digital transformation support services for MSMEs and its uh, menu of services. <clears throat> this will be a major contributor to wider efforts to encourage MSMEs to expand the use of technology to contribute towards improved operational efficiency. This support is highly complementary to the Development Bank of Jamaica's existing program uh, and to incentivize MSME to undertake the digital transformation of their businesses. Given the multi-sector nature of Digital Jamaica and the fact that it feeds into the wider government activities aimed at realizing Jamaica's overall digital agenda, support will also be provided to the Office of the Prime Minister to support the related coordination activities. We are particularly proud of the highly participatory way in which Digital Jamaica was uh, developed. We thank the permanent secretaries for their leadership and ownership uh, of the process and commend all the technical staff uh, that they appointed to work with the delegation and the Planning Institute of Jamaica in this regard. I'm happy to share with you that Jamaica benefits under Digital Jamaica uh, can be expanded through our complementary regional global gateway initiative. The EU-LAC Digital Alliance. The alliance is aimed at facilitating uh, EU-LAC private sector joint ventures and develop, developing bi-regional dialogue and cooperation across the full spectrum of digital uh, issues. Through our global gateway investment strategy, the EU can leverage quality investments to help address the Caribbean region's uh, infrastructure needs while creating local value added uh, and promoting growth, jobs and social cohesion. Global Gateway also supports human development, including youth and women's empowerment, enhancing innovation, education and skills, as well as enabling business and uh, regulatory environment. Digital Jamaica is an excellent example of this strategy. Uh, hence our first flagship in the region. Uh, we look forward to continuing this work with Jamaica as we now move to the implementation phase. Thank you, dear ministers. Uh, I believe both Jamaica and the European Union can be proud that the people of Jamaica are at the center of digital Jamaica. Thank you also for allowing the European Union to be your partner of choice in this important journey. Thank you.
Deputy General Secretary, thank you so much for uh, those very, very kind and wise words and explaining really uh, what this project will mean for Jamaica. Again, making that link for everybody to fully understand their role and what it will do to help them in terms of being part of a knowledge-based and digitally transformed society. You know, ladies and gentlemen, I love living in this time. This period of life is exceptionally good because we are sitting here in Kingston, Jamaica, uh, launching or exchanging papers on such a wonderful program like this, and the rest of the world is seeing. We are actually streaming live, not just in Jamaica, but to the EU and your websites. And so at this time, before we have our minister, may I just ask you to wave to the rest of the world. There's the camera, that one. Just a big Jamaican wave to everybody saying hi from Kingston, Jamaica to the rest of the world as we uh, have Digital Jamaica, the exchange of documents today. Thank you so much for complying. That's very nice of you. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we have our keynote speaker. And you know, uh, you could say she's a new kid on the block, uh, but really I'd like to say the new minister on the block. She was appointed in May this year as the minister without portfolio in the office of the prime minister responsible for uh, skills training and digital transformation. Big work, you know, and let me tell you why. Because uh, it's a first portfolio of its kind, named of its kind, residing in the office of the Prime Minister. And she has a big job to ensure that the rest of Jamaica understands what we're doing in terms of transforming the country. But I've watched her over these last few months, and there is an intentionality that she has in terms of doing the job, a purposefulness that she goes around in terms of ensuring that she's deliberate in when she speaks to ensure that everybody understands in the room how important this is to ensure that we, we don't do it in the manual, traditional way that we do things all the time. And two, we we'll put it in the hands of a young woman. I am absolutely pleased and proud that the Prime Minister had such vision to do that. Because if you want something done, no disrespect to men, you put it in a hard-working woman's hands. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome this morning our main speaker, Senator Dr. The Honorable Dana Morris Dixon. Ms. Naomi Francis, Press Secretary in the Office of the Prime Minister and our Master of Ceremonies, or our Lady of Ceremonies today, um, and you're being way too kind to me, thank you. Um, the Honorable Favel Williams, Minister of Education and Youth and one of the hardest working persons you will find. It's not an easy portfolio, but watching her, I've learned a lot as a new minister in terms of the kind of commitment that's needed and drive. And we're happy to have you and we're, you know, it's, it's a blessing to Jamaica to have you doing this work. So thank you. Um, the Honorable Alando Turlong, Minister of State in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade and my fellow Campionite. He went to a good school. That's why he knows so many languages. Um, and, you know, he didn't, he didn't know he was going to speak. And he came and he did that speech. And it was just, I said, you know, you didn't need any warning for that. And, and he really beautifully laid out the relationship between the EU and Jamaica. Uh, Ms. Helena Koenig, Deputy Secretary General, Economic and Global Affairs, EU. Thank you for being in Jamaica and thank you for launching this. And when you have people like you who are so senior coming to Jamaica, we know that it signals the importance of the relationship and also the importance of this project. And of course, Her Excellency Marianne Van Steen, the ambassador of the EU to Jamaica, who everybody knows and loves and who has just been such a nice shining star in terms of pushing forward the relationship. And I thank her for being very kind to me as I took over this portfolio. Um, other members of the diplomatic corps, representatives of the public and private sector organization and other stakeholders who are here, other specially invited guests, ladies and gentlemen, good morning to you all. Now it is both an honor and a pleasure to stand before you and before such a distinguished audience today at the remarkable 
convergence of minds dedicated to fostering a transformative digital landscape in Jamaica. Today is not just about the progression of technology, but is about envisioning a future where opportunities are endless and where innovations break the barriers of limitations. Today we gather to embrace and celebrate the digital renaissance that promises to reshape our beautiful nation. I would like to extend the gratitude of the government of Jamaica to Deputy Secretary General Koenig for joining us today and Ambassador Van Steen for the relentless support and collaboration with us in Jamaica. Before we proceed further, it would be remiss of me not to recognize how long this journey has been and our, and our minister in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs has pointed that out. The EU has been pivotal in propelling Jamaica forward on the path of growth and development. The EU has consistently been Jamaica's single largest donor of grant funding. The EU's belief in our potential and its contribution to our journey is creating a legacy, enhancing the lives of countless Jamaicans and paving the way for a prosperous future. So to the EU, we extend our heartfelt appreciation. Furthermore, we also give you our unwavering commitment to honoring this partnership by utilizing these contributions effectively for the advancement and betterment of Jamaica. And I know many times when you're in your offices and you're going through all these paperwork, you know, it can seem mundane. But this is not a mundane project. This is a project that will have impact. It's a project that can transform. And so we thank you very much for this kind of support. Now with major initiatives like this one, we can sometimes lose perspective on why we started this journey in the first place. And we've been on this journey for some time now. And let's remind ourselves why we're on this digital journey. And I usually have four principles, and I talk about four principles around this digital transformation that's driving it. And the first one is respect. We're on this journey because every single citizen deserves the respect of their government. Respect is the bedrock of any fruitful relationship. In the realm of digital transformation, this means putting the needs and rights of our citizens first. We're harnessing the power of technology, not for the sake of flashy innovations, but to tangibly enhance the lives of Jamaicans. When citizens don't have to jump through hoops to access basic services, when they're treated as valued stakeholders in our digital future, that is respect in action. Next is efficiency. Efficiency isn't just about speed. It's about optimizing resources, eliminating redundancy, and ensuring that every action has a clear beneficial purpose. The digital tools we introduce are aimed at refining our processes, reducing bureaucratic hurdles, and ensuring that our citizens can access services seamlessly and effectively. The third one is inclusion. Inclusion is the promise that no Jamaican will be left behind. As we move towards a digital future, we must ensure that every individual, regardless of age, background, or location, can access and benefit from our digital initiatives. The digitization of our nation is not just for the tech savvy. It's for every mother in Kingston, every father in rural communities, and every child with a dream. The digital Jamaica is for every Jamaican. And lastly, there is trust. Trust is the cornerstone of any initiative. As we move deeper into our digital journey, we'll be custodians of immense amounts of data and information. It is our solemn duty to ensure that this data is protected 
and that the systems we build, we build are secure. Beyond data, our citizens need to trust that these digital changes are for their benefit, that their concerns are heard, and that the evolution we are driving is in line with the values and aspirations of our Jamaican family. As we push forward, we need to keep our focus on the larger picture. We must always remember our why. The introduction of new digital systems and processes will come with many challenges. Technical hitches, resistance to change, and the inevitable learning curve. However, we must remain steadfast in our commitment and remember the goals we set out with, which were respect, efficiency, inclusion, and trust. The digital, tra the digital transitioning program for Jamaica will be executed with these goals in mind. Digital Jamaica is a beacon of change and development, generously funded by the EU. This program stands as a testament to the unyielding commitment and collaborative spirit of our nations, marking a new chapter in our enduring partnership. The initiative aims not to only transform the technological landscape of Jamaica, but to empower our citizens by enhancing access to information, promoting digital literacy, and fostering innovation and entrepreneurship. In today's rapidly evolving digital landscape, the significance of digital skills cannot be overstated. These skills, which range from basic digital literacy, such as operating smart devices, and I tell a lot of my young people that digital skills is not about scrolling on TikTok. It's more than that. And understanding online platforms to advanced abilities in coding, digital marketing, and cybersecurity serve as the linchpin of modern-day personal and professional endeavors. They empower individuals to navigate a world increasingly dominated by digital interfaces, online services, and tech-driven communication methods. As our personal lives, careers, and social interactions become more intertwined with the digital realm, possessing these skills becomes not just beneficial, but essential. Without them, individuals risk being left behind, unable to access essential services, pursue direct job opportunities, or engage in the broader global community. In today's era, digital empowerment is not a luxury, it is a necessity. It is a catalyst that propels nations towards unparalleled growth and prosperity. It bridges the gap between the urban and the rural the privileged and the underprivileged, creating a symphony of inclusivity and equality. Moreover, from an economic and societal perspective, a population equipped with digital skills is better poised for innovation, entrepreneurship, and tapping into global markets. Businesses can operate more efficiently, harnessing digital tools for productivity, outreach, and growth, Countries with a digitally literate population are more competitive in the global arena, attracting investments, fostering technological advancements, and driving economic growth. In essence, digital skills are not merely tools for individual advancement. They are foundational to a nation's resilience, adaptability, and prosperity in an interconnected world. We're not just building a digital Jamaica, we're crafting a resilient, inclusive, and prosperous nation. This digital Jamaica project is not just an ordinary project, it is so much more. The rise of the digital economy offers unparalleled, as you see, opportunities for growth, innovation, and development. And we see it in the data. The World Economic Forum has pointed out that digital economies are growing at an average of 10% annually, which is much higher than the 1.5% average. What this means is that if we focus on projects like these, 
that there is immense potential for economic transformation. And for developing countries like ours, the digital economy represents a unique chance to leapfrog traditional barriers and rapidly advance our economic trajectories. Access to global markets previously restricted by geographical limitations becomes seamless. Small businesses can thrive beyond local ecosystems, reaching global consumers with just a few clicks. We're in a post-COVID e-commerce world. A vendor in Kingston can sell to patrons anywhere in the world, whether it's Barcelona or it's in any part of Germany, for example. Additionally, by investing in digital infrastructure and education, we can attract foreign investment and multinational companies looking for digitally skilled labor and innovative environments. And the IMF has shown us that a 10% increase in digital penetration can lead to between 0.5 and 0.7% point increase in economic growth rates for developing countries. So when we do this, we're actually investing in the growth of Jamaica. And you know growth has been hard to come by. And so this project, you know, it seems technology and education is bigger than that. It is much more than that. It is about us getting growth in Jamaica. Now, I know we won't get there overnight. <laughs> um, involvement in the digital economy re requires more than just passive participation. Developing countries like Jamaica, we have to actively invest in digital literacy, infrastructure, and create regulatory frameworks that foster innovation while ensuring data protection and cybersecurity. Now, I'm pleased to report that the administration has been proactive in ensuring that the policy and fiscal environment incentivizes active participation. And you've seen many of it, and there's, there's so many, I can't even talk about all of them. Putting our police records online, applications in Kingston where you don't have to stand on Duke Street in a very long line. Um, and at your convenience, you can go online and get your, apply for your police report. The RGD has most of its services now online. Um, in the past, when you just had a baby, a mother would have to go into office to get a birth certificate for that child. You don't know, no longer have to do that. That is done online. And the RGD, for example, is working to put many more things online um, so that people do not have to go there. And that's what we're doing across government, putting more online. A lot of our taxes can be paid online already. When you are driving too fast, which I never do, um, and you are stopped by the police, you now have our electronic ticketing system where they can easily look up how many tickets you have. They can do your ticket and print it right away. There's a lot of transition and transformation happening already in our country. So this digital journey, this digital transformation of our lives isn't recent. It didn't just start. Jamaica has been on this journey for many years. The difference is that now we are recognizing and experiencing the benefits of our collective choices. And where benefits on paper, where you would have seen it on paper, are actually becoming benefits in real life. And there are many more milestones coming up. We're working on our ICT authority, which will soon be established, and officially having a government CIO to coordinate all of these technology projects that we have going on across government. The data protection regulations are almost done and will be taken forward very soon into Parliament in short order. And I saw the, data, the chairman of the Data Protection Oversight Committee here, um, also in the audience. Also, the regulations for our digital ID will also be taken to Parliament soon. We are enhancing our data centers and the head of our eGov, which will become our ICT authority, is here. And they've been working really hard under her direction to beef up our data centers, to enhance our data center and to beef up our cybersecurity operations. 
the National Broadband Project, which our lovely minister has worked so hard at, Minister Williams, to get internet in our schools, and it's been expanded even further, where we have internet in our post offices, in our police stations, in our courts across the country. That is being expanded also. So there's a lot going on in the area of skills or main training institution, the National Training Agency, is doing a lot more. It is infusing technology into every single program. So no longer is it agriculture that you're doing, you're now doing agri-tech, because we understand that the way forward can only be through the route of technology. And that has been a priority for us. And I need to note that skills start early, and I haven't spoken much about skills, but digital and skills, they work hand in hand and in tandem, and they have to go together. The skills start early, and I'm happy that most of this money goes to the Ministry of Education, because we have to start with our students, our children, and with our teachers. And so I applaud the team that focused on these areas and putting the money towards these areas, because that's the only way that we are going to be able to be a part of this future. And as our Honourable Minister said, and also our Prime Minister, and echoing our Prime Minister, that we can't just be consumers of technology, we need to become producers. And I have seen it. I have seen that that future is already here. I have seen young children participating in robotics competitions and doing beautiful things, including all girls groups, which I like to see too. I was recently, two weeks ago, invited to the University of the West Indies for an AI hackathon. Our young people in computer science were building solutions for government using AI tools, and they were fantastic. We have businesses that are looking at how they can use robots and use drones more in agriculture. We're doing a lot of fabulous things with very limited resources. And so when we put all of this money into our children and into our teachers to increase their capacity from early, what it means is that in the future, we are going to, in fact, become producers of this technology because already we have students who are there, who are working. They don't have an AI lab. We need an AI lab in Jamaica but they were solving our problems in government using artificial intelligence. So that future that we talk about, it's actually here. It's already here. And projects like this allow us to further unmask the potential of our children. And our children have huge potential, even with very little, even with very little. And so as we layer on a bit more with this funding, you can imagine what's going to happen to this beautiful country going forward. So in conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, Digital Jamaica is more than an initiative. It's a shared vision, a vision of a Jamaica where the digital and the real blend seamlessly, where potentials are limitless and where the future is now. As we embark on this exciting journey, let us embrace the boundless potentials, potentialities that lie ahead. Let us cultivate a culture of learning and adaptation, and let us unite in our pursuit of a digitally empowered Jamaica. It is now more than ever that our collective efforts, passions, and visions must converge to script a new narrative to paint a new horizon and to build a new Jamaica, a digital Jamaica for all Jamaicans. Thank you and let us embrace the future with hope and determination. Minister, thank you so much. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, you see what I was talking about? Uh, a speech filled with purpose, intentional words that will paint a picture of, in fact, that new Jamaica that the Prime Minister speaks about, and I think everybody 
in the Jamaican government understands and fully embraces and speaks about. Uh, Minister Morris Dixon, though, mentioned a, a few things. Um, she perked my, uh, my ears when she said, we need an AI lab. I don't know if um, any enterprising private sector entity would want to uh, partner with the government to build that great AI lab, uh, or even our international partners too. But importantly, uh, a couple of the, the key points really, we're doing this based on you know, looking at our values and aspirations. You know, and when you talk about how people should see the future, we talk about hope and prosperity. They must be able to you know, aspire to something. And certainly when we talk about digital transformation, it uh, hits at the heart of what our people's aspirations are. That we should do it based on respect, efficiency, inclusion, and critically, trust. That is absolutely so essential for us to move on uh, in terms of what we're doing here. So thank you so much, Minister. Really appreciate the kind words and really appreciate uh, the purpose and intentionality that you came and delivered with to ensure that we all understand that this is a critical project. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time, not just for picture taking, but time for a symbolic act to signal that we really have uh, started this uh, program and that the government fully embraces it and that we uh, appreciate our partners. So ladies and gentlemen, may I invite the Deputy Secretary General for Economic and Global Affairs at the European Union, Ms. Elena Koenig, and our Minister, Senator Dr. the Honorable Dana Dixon, to do now the formal exchange of documents signaling the Global Gateway, Digital Jamaica, the exchange of documents ceremony as we conclude. Uh, Minister and Deputy General Secretary. Yes. So again, this is not just a photo opportunity. This is really, uh, let's do it right in the, in the midst there. Exactly. And for the still photographers, it's always, you know, a big thing. Uh, re remember that we're, it's not just, you know, um, being seen in the room. This is what we call from Jamaica to the world, right? So everybody across the world is able to see. All right. And so, Minister, if you would, just the full exchange. Yes. And a good handshake to conclude. Indeed. Uh, may I, if I may take... All right. Thank you so much, Minister, and thank you so much, Deputy Secretary General of the EU. All right. And so now, ladies and gentlemen, let me remind you that this program really will uh, herald the increased access and use of robust, affordable, and secure broadband connectivity by educational institutions and places of safety in Jamaica, strengthen digital competencies for early childhood and primary teacher educators and teachers, and of course, increase technology adoption and the use by our own micro, small, and medium-sized enterprises, MSMEs in Jamaica. What a beautiful morning this has been, really and truly. Big things are going for Jamaica because this now uh, sets us up to do great things uh, for our people, with our people, and certainly make a wonderful impact on the rest of the world. It's been my pleasure, ladies and gentlemen, to be with you. And uh, as we go, by the way, may I, I think I omitted, and, and let me uh, just ensure, our ambassador from Belgium. Uh, ambassador, good morning to you uh, as you join us uh, this morning. Thank you so much, Ambassador Elena de Geis. Did I get that right? De Geis, more or less. Sorry, I think I got an 88% or a 90% there. All right, great. Thank you so much for joining us, Ambassador. Really appreciate it. Our partners in the EU, thank you. We really, really appreciate it. And of course, our ministers and specially invited guests, thank you so much for being with us this morning. It's been my pleasure. We now feel like we're on the super highway especially as we infuse our, our students and teachers and educators in this process. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Have a beautiful and productive rest of today.
Costa. All right. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you could. I'm sorry, Mr. Oh, ah, there you go. Right. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, if we could just uh, invite, we're going to have a, a group photo up, and we just have to take again uh, our photo 